tonight. Evraz North America is blaming cheap imports for pending layoffs at its Regina pipe mill. Also, a prominent CEO in Ontario's online sports gambling market says Saskatchewan should follow that province's lead. Plus, it all comes down to this. Mark McMorris makes history at the X Games. This is CBC Saskatchewan News. It is Monday, January 30th, and the CBC Saskatchewan News starts right now. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Layoff notices are expected to be handed out to workers in the pipe division at Regina's Evraz Steel. The union says the company indicated around 100 people could be given notices in the next couple of weeks. It says some workers who will receive layoff notices may be transitioned to the steel side of the plant based on seniority. The union says the layoffs from the last spring on the pipeline side, coupled with the latest round, means the parts of the operation will be down to 25 workers. The union's acting president says the company gave a few reasons for the latest round of layoffs. High interest rates, uh, their customers are hoarding a lot of inventory due to uh, uh, foreign pipe on the market and uh, they think a softening of steel prices. They don't know when that's going to change. Everaz North America says this round of layoffs was not expected and is mainly due to unfairly traded pipe imports. It tells CBC the layoffs are temporary. Back in August, the Russian steel and mining company announced plans to sell its North American assets, including the Regina Mill. Police in Saskatoon are investigating the city's first homicide of 2023. Officers were called to a home on Idlewild Drive North near 33rd Street East just after 7 o'clock this morning. They say they found a man dead inside the home. Police also took two men into custody, a 28-year-old and a 44-year-old. The 44-year-old is facing second-degree murder charges. Police say they'll have more information as the investigation unfolds. The province says Saskatchewan is in need of mental health professionals, but a doctorate of psychology candidate says there are too many barriers on the journey to becoming a licensed psychologist. Laura Sharpaletti has that story. 46-year-old Stefan Olszewski has two master's degrees, one of them in forensic psychology. He even teaches in the University of Regina's psychology department. And yet, he's having a very hard time accessing his dream job as a licensed psychologist. Olszewski is originally from the U.S. His veteran benefits make schooling there a lot more affordable for him. In 2020, he applied to the Saskatchewan College of Psychologists. But Olszewski was told his degree was missing a course foundational to the Saskatchewan psychologist requirements. The college said he would have to begin a whole new degree. So Olszewski enrolled in an online doctorate of psychology program with a California university. But now, he says he can't get an internship because that school is not registered with a Saskatchewan program that connects students with internships. Oh, I know there are several other individuals in my position. There's people willing to help, but we can't get access to help. We're being kind of um, roadblocked. The need for mental health professionals in Saskatchewan is high. The Ministry of Health says 19% of its psychologist positions are vacant. The Canadian Mental Health Association says Saskatchewan has too much gatekeeping. But we do get a lot of callers here um, who are looking for uh, someone who can do a formal diagnosis. They're looking for a psychologist um, or services that a psychologist can provide. And so you have a group of people here who are like looking desperately for something f for those services. You have people here who have that skill, but we can't make them meet together. Olszewski and Rakow say there needs to be more than one route into the provincial psychology profession, especially for people like Olszewski who are educated and motivated. It makes me very sad that he can't go out and help people. Um, I look at, at that and that's the exact kind of skill set and the exact passion and, and and ability that we want to keep here in Saskatchewan. I do have high respect, especially for the regulatory body. They're there to actually promote the safety of the general public and promote safety of everybody. But again, the regulatory body, even the, not just the regulatory body, but the politicians, that we all need the change to actually fix this problem. 
Olszewski says he will continue to try to land an internship here in the province so he can help others, like he says his own psychologist helped him. Laura Sharpaletti, CBC News, Regina. The CEO of a prominent operator in Ontario's online sports gambling market thinks Saskatchewan should follow that province's lead. PointsBet Canada is one of almost 70 regulated operators in Ontario. It's the only province in Canada to open up its online betting market to several competitors. The Saskatchewan Indian Gaming Authority and the provincial government have the exclusive rights to the online gambling market here for five years. PointsBet Canada's Scott Vanderwell says that won't stop unregulated operators from continuing to take bets from Saskatchewan residents. The reality is... I'd rather my competitors sit inside the same set of rules as me, as opposed to uh, having those competitors decide that they don't have an option to, or they don't like those rules and sit outside of them, um, which uh, means that they're still a competitor. They're just not one that uh, has the full, uh, full visibility uh, on their uh, actions and behaviors. Ontario chose to invite them in and, and regulate them and license them and bring them under a regulatory standard. Uh, some options, you can do that, you can do a variation of that, you can choose to uh, increase enforcement and keep them out. Those are all choices governments have. Uh, and that's why we, uh, we just say to the government, you need to do what's best for your province. Uh, and that there isn't a model that says it's this one and you have to stamp it across the country. Vanderbilt says Saskatchewan's approach so far was the logical first move, but he says it shouldn't be the final one. In the meantime, his company will respect PlayNow.com's exclusive arrangement. He says PointsBet Canada won't do business here as an unregulated operator. Saskatchewan curler Robin Silvernagel's latest Provincial Scotties Tournament of Hearts title is one to remember. The North Battleford Rink won the Provincial Tournament yesterday in Estevan, downing Martinsville's Nancy Martin 8-4 in the final to win Silvernagel's third championship in five years. Robin Silvernagel, once again, your Saskatchewan Women's Curling Championships. But how Silvernagel and her rank even made it to the Scotties is remarkable. She'd been out of competitive curling to take care of her son Colt. He was born in 2021 and needed multiple surgeries. Her team of Kelly Schaefer, Sherry Just and Cara Tenveno was put together in December. They had just one practice before entering last chance playdowns to get into the Scotties. Silvernagel says she didn't even know if she'd ever get to another chance to play for a national championship. You know, I'm happy that I got to two Scotties, and if I don't get there again, it's okay. But, of course, we're competitive people and want to get there again. So this one's a little extra special, just knowing, never knowing what the future holds. Even if you are competitively curling for the rest of your life, you never know if you're going to make it to a Scotties. Silvernagel's rink will now represent Saskatchewan at the National Scotties Tournament of Hearts. It begins February 17th in Kamloops, B.C. A former Regina Pat was named to his first ever NHL All-Star team. Vegas Golden Knights forward Chandler Stevenson was added to the Pacific Division team as an injury replacement. He's got 44 points in 51 games for the Knights so far this season. The Saskatoon product played for the Pats from 2010 until 2014. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders have opened up a grant program using money brought in from last year's Grey Cup Festival. It's called the Grey Cup Festival Legacy Program. It's all about supporting programs that help young people promote healthy lifestyles and foster mental health. Organizers say Saskatchewan municipalities, Indigenous communities and charity organizations are eligible to apply for up to $50,000 in cash. We close on February the 27th. We encourage you to get your applications in early because we expect a significant number of applications. Grant dollars are hard to come by in Saskatchewan. They're much needed. We know that when we looked at the marketplace, we know that we'll see a large intake of communities looking for these dollars. Given our great commitment to truth and reconciliation, the adjudication panel will give particular attention to applications that have an Indigenous engagement plan within them. A new Made in Canada exhibition at the Saskatchewan Science Centre is hoping to challenge the way you think. Behind Racism runs until April 2nd and is sponsored by the Regina Police Service. It explores and demonstrates how the processes in your brain that help us think and act quickly can lead to dangerous biases against people who are different from us. This exhibition is inviting us to look at 
our thoughts and how we interact with the world and sort of question some of the assumptions that we made. One of the, the big parts of the exhibition is all about how, how our brain thinks. So it explores heuristics, which are really just a, a fancy word for mental shortcuts. And so um, you can think about it like if you were, you know, thousands of years ago, you're running in the forest, you hear a noise, your brain is just automatically going to think it's a bear and that prevents you from getting eaten. So in that instance, it's actually a really good thing. But there are, there are times in modern society when some of our mental shortcuts are not, um, not correct and they're not helpful for society. And so those are the things that we want to flag. Um, so that we, they don't grow into prejudices, which would lead to racist actions, which of course can ultimately lead to you know, violence. It's a mixed media exhibition, so there are some text panels so that people can read and sort of get right into a lot of the details and statistics if they want to. Um, there are some ex exhibits in, in it that really attempt to make it really obvious visually what's, what some of the statistics are like. The hate crimes um, exhibit in particular, I think is very impactful. There's sort of a, a bar chart that's like six feet tall and really, really shows the disparity um, amongst crimes between a lot of different um, groups. I think understanding the way that we think and developing critical thinking skills um, are really the way that we make the world a better, a better way. It doesn't matter what we're talking about, whether we're talking about racism or climate change or, or almost anything. I think learning, learning about more about the way we think why we think the things that we think, and then most importantly, being comfortable challenging those assumptions that we have. Um, that is what ultimately leads to people changing their minds about things and, and ultimately leads to us having a better world. Gorgeous sunshine with a side of an extreme cold warning. The silver lining to the deep freeze we're living in is that we do get to soak up all that glorious sunshine. And that cold, it's not going to last very long. It looks like things are going to warm up in Regina just in time for the Frost Festival to get underway on the weekend. Ethan will have more about the forecast after the break. Stay with us. This weather update is brought to you by the Capital Automotive Group. Trade and Upgrade is on now. Welcome back. Our weather specialist, Ethan Williams, <clears throat> joins me now. I'm so excited to see you that I've now yeah. started wow. choking. Calm down. Um, the weather, though, will certainly take your breath away. Uh, yeah. The, remember what winter feels like? Uh, this is it. A little cold but sunny, which has uh, been nice. But the cold has, of course, prompted those extreme cold warnings in the province. Uh, eastern sections of south and central Saskatchewan, including Regina, Weyburn, Estevan, and Yorkton, and uh, the far north as well. We're still seeing uh, some pretty cold wind chills there. And just because the uh, extreme cold warnings are in effect for that part of the province doesn't mean it's cold elsewhere. Temperatures not Triggering, triggering those extreme cold warnings. It's actually the wind chills, uh, which you see here. Temperatures uh, or wind chills getting down into the minus 40 mark in portions of northern Saskatchewan. And as we go a little closer into south and central, you can see really that cold air is where that extreme cold warning is in uh, southeastern and east central portions of the province. Down uh, right now in Regina to minus 37 with the wind chill, and we're already only at about quarter after six. Winds actually strongest in southwestern Saskatchewan today, where it's a little bit warmer. So uh, wind chills not too extreme there, but it sure felt close to minus 30 with the winds this afternoon. The good news is I think we're about to see a bit of a change in this trend as we head through the rest of the week. Right now, pretty amplified jet stream pattern stretching all the way down to Southern California. That polar vortex still gonna slink a bit to the south over the next few days, but eastward. So it's gonna pull that cold air away and a little bit of a ridge building into our atmosphere, which means warmer weather, possibly quite a dramatic shift in our temperatures, especially in South and Central Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan come the end of the week. Now, in the meantime, a bit of a changeable pattern over these next few days, but I think it's still going to be pretty cold. Looking at a mostly clear night tonight, except for southwestern and west central sections, could see a little bit of cloud cover along with a little bit of snow moving in with the system. Really not much from this system through the day, through south and central tomorrow, moving from northwest to southeast. Much of us, except for eastern sections, going to be seeing this maybe one or two centimeters. This is going to clear out as we head through the evening hours tomorrow. Another clear and cold night overnight into Wednesday. And then another little system slides its way through uh, portions of central Saskatchewan. Cloud cover there, but still in the north, I think mostly 
sunny over these next couple of days. And tomorrow in morning in southwestern Saskatchewan, we could see winds pick up again. But throughout the afternoon, a lot of us seeing very calm conditions. Wednesday, gusts will pick up a little bit with that system moving in, but they'll only be about between 30 and 40 kilometers an hour. But that is going to make it feel cold. Of course, those wind chills going to be picking up tonight. Remember, this uh, board kind of undershoots a little bit, so closer to minus 45 in the far north, eastern sections close to minus 40. But a warm-up coming even as we head into Wednesday morning, still pretty chilly in the far north of the province. And that warm-up you will see here on our seven-day forecast. Uh, tomorrow again, mostly cloudy conditions, maybe a little bit of snow in Regina. Uh, cold for Groundhog Day, but uh, warming up very quickly as we head into the rest of the weekend uh, with a little bit of snow possible. And Saskatoon, that warm-up is visible for you as well. Close to minus 20 uh, tomorrow, but then the warm-up as we head through the weekend. I think the Groundhog may be predicting a bit of an early spring, Sam. I, I want to say yes, please, but there is no predicting the weather anymore. Yeah, we got a little bit of winter to go still. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Ethan. You bet. A family-owned Lumsden Micro Distilleries won a special award and multiple medals at the Canadian Whiskey Awards. Last Mountain Distillery just won the Canadian Wheat Whiskey of the Year Award. It also took home two gold medals for its Wheat Whiskey and Wood Rye Whiskey. The Micro Distillery was opened back in 2010 in a home garage and was the first of its kind in Saskatchewan. We'll be back after the break. Federal Parliament is back in session. MPs are in Ottawa after a six-week break. Health care seems to be the top of the agenda, with the Prime Minister meeting next week with the Premiers. The leader of the NDP said today he's concerned about the push from some Premiers to allow private companies to deliver more services. In the last election, the Prime Minister made a really big deal of calling out the Conservatives for proposing the idea of bringing in more for-profit private health care. But now when Doug Ford is doing exactly that, mm -hmm. he's calling it innovation. We will ensure that the Canada Health Act is fully respected. In the past, this government has pulled back money from provinces that haven't respected it. We will continue to do that. The Premier said today they want Ottawa to increase health care transfers by 13%. It's becoming a familiar scene, growing piles of lost luggage in Canadian airports. Sophia Harris looks at the problem and what's being done about it. I feel extremely angry. Deborah Cleary was exasperated uh, I... after waiting more than a month for her suitcase. It disappeared when flying from Italy back to Montreal on Air Canada. Two weeks ago, Cleary returned to the Montreal airport to search again. There were just bags that were piling up and piling up. But hers was still nowhere to be found. I'm just sort of desperate to get my bag back. Baggage problems first emerge in the summer. The airlines blame staffing shortages. Then in December, the cause was massive winter storms disrupting flights. Delays equal missing bags. This Generally, former Air Canada executive says Ottawa needs to provide more funding to help keep airport operations running smoothly. There's obviously a need for better uh, infrastructure, better resources for airports to make them more resilient to these uh, weather events. There's also the problem of locating missing bags. We zoomed in on Google Maps and it is a public storage facility. Nikita Reese was able to track the whereabouts of her husband's missing suitcase thanks to an AirTag tracker inside the bag. Even so, Air Canada declared the luggage lost. The most frustrating thing about it was we had no way of getting it. Even though we knew the location and we told the airline so many times. My bag! She finally got the bag back last week, more than four months after it had disappeared during a flight home from Greece. Minister El Gabra, Ian the transport minister says airlines, airlines need to step up their game. It's frustrating that airlines still have not uh, modernized their luggage handling system. Air Canada says its baggage operations have returned to normal and that Reese got $2,300 compensation. Following a CBC News inquiry to Air Canada, Cleary also got her suitcase back. It's just been a series of frustrations. Ottawa says it's beefing up its air passenger rights regulations, which may include new rules for missing baggage. Sophia Harris, CBC News, Vancouver. As we suffer through the frigid cold going between warm homes and workplaces to vehicles, some people are facing something more deadly. A Winnipeg man who got frostbite in the extreme cold is recovering at a warming shelter. 
People without a home have been seeking out safety wherever they can, but there is not always somewhere to go. And as Josh Crabb reports, it gets more complicated when a person is living with addiction. Early Saturday morning, the temperature was in the mid-minus 20s. Robert, who CBC isn't identifying to protect his privacy, says he was in psychosis from using methamphetamine and didn't think a shelter would take him in because he was high. He went into a porta potty and walked out in need of a hospital. I had severe frostbite on my, on my feet. Uh, by the time I had the sense to leave the porta potty and realized that there wasn't anybody there waiting for me, Robert walked with frostbitten feet from near the Disraeli Bridge to St. Boniface Hospital, where he says he was treated and stayed overnight. He was discharged later in the day and came to this warming centre on St. Mary's Road, run by St. Boniface Street Links. Executive Director Marion Willis says he isn't the only one here with a cold-related injury. Well, there's a fellow in the corner over there with his leg and feet bandaged. He's on crutches. It's been a challenging and dangerous few days for people who don't have a permanent place to live with temperatures dropping below minus 30. The cold snap isn't over yet, leaving some in Winnipeg in search of the most basic necessities like shelter and food. People that have next to nothing, we're all supporting each other just by simple things of bread and getting it what we need. The frostbite Robert suffered is a risk many face. He says the doctor working the overnight shift wanted him admitted to hospital, but a different physician determined he could be discharged. He just made a different determination and that was that I, I could go to the shelters, which in many cases are full. He ended up at the warming shelter several hours after leaving hospital. In terms of my physical health, I was very well cared for. It's the mental health piece, which is actually the driver of the problems with my physical health, that is, um, isn't, uh, isn't really getting addressed. The Winnipeg Regional Health Authority won't speak to specific cases, but a spokesperson says clinicians work with people who are unsheltered to figure out a plan for their discharge from hospital. That work includes consulting with a social worker and connecting with shelters. If they feel it's unsafe for a patient to leave, the discharge won't happen. Josh Crabb, CBC News, Winnipeg. And Ethan is back with one last look at your weather. And it's uh, going to be a good night to look out for frostbite, Sam. Uh, temperatures in Regina can be quite low overnight. In fact, we do have that extreme cold warning in effect. Wind chill is going to rise a bit by morning, but still to around minus 30. By the time we get to the noon hour, a little bit of cloud cover. Chance of some of that light snow moving through with that system. We're still going to be a little cool around uh, minus 22. In Saskatoon, starting with mostly cloudy conditions tomorrow morning, chance of flurries. You may see a little bit of sunshine as we get toward the afternoon. I think we'll get progressively clearer as we head through the afternoon and evening. Now, we've been giving a lot of love to the Saskatoon skyline lately. How about another photo? This one from our regular Victor, who sent this from the uh, parkade of the Jim Pattison Children's Hospital. Something about that uh, skyline that just, uh, or the sky that makes the skyline pop, Sam. And it looks like your weather map in all those colors. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Thanks, Ethan. You bet. And before we leave you tonight, Saskatchewan's own Mark McMorris is making history. This jump right here is where he can approve upon his last runs. Does. The Snowbird star made history on Sunday at the 2023 Winter X Games in Aspen, Colorado. The 29-year-old from Regina successfully defended his slopestyle gold, and that broke a tie with American Jamie Anderson for the most Winter X Game medals with 22. The three-time Olympic slopestyle bronze medalist has won the X Games men's slopestyle title seven times it all in Aspen. Comes down. Always something to be proud about when it comes to Mark. That is it for us tonight. Ethan will be back with more news and weather tonight at 11. Thank you for watching. Stay warm.